Shalom, brothers and sisters. For this week's Thursday Thought, I want to get back into bearing my testimony of the various people that were called to lead the different branches of our movement after the death of Joseph Smith. Now, I've borne my testimony on James Strang and Sidney Rigdon, and I know some people got upset both for each individually, and then the fact that they got, some people got upset because I bore testimony of both of them together. And someone even made the comment, bearing testimony that James Strang and Sidney Rigdon are both prophets of the Restoration is just like saying that you sustain Brigham Young too. So this week, bearing my testimony on Brigham Young. This is going to be an interesting one because I was actually raised in the Brighamite sect. I definitely do not have a testimony that they are the one true church. If I did, I would not be a non-denominational Mormon. I would be following, you know, in, in whatever they're telling me to do. But I, that doesn't mean, just because I'm not a member of their church anymore, doesn't mean that I don't sustain President Nelson as the president of his church, as an apostle, the head apostle, over... The, the branch of our shared faith that he runs. Now, this isn't going to be about Nelson. This isn't going to be about Brigham Young. For those that don't know, which I'm guessing are very few, when Joseph Smith died, there was a lot of infighting, and eventually Brigham Young was able to start his new church in April. I'm sorry, not April. Uh, I'm not sure what month it was, but it was in uh, 1847. And then the official, that, that's when he organized a new first presidency made up of himself and two other apostles. Now, they did not receive any kind of angelic ordination like James Strang, Joseph Smith, or Oliver Cowdery did. So because there was no one in their sect at that time that had the keys of the first presidency, my understanding is that it's not a true first presidency. It's just three apostles calling themselves a first presidency. So they, they definitely did not have all of the keys that Joseph Smith had because he died and took some with them. With him, rather. And, and that's okay. You know, I, I'm, I'm not trying to say that to disparage that particular branch of the faith. I'm just pointing out that, you know, over 100 years later, they are still trying to force this idea that they are the one and only true church. And I do believe that President Nelson is moving away from that. And I can I commend him for, for doing so. This idea of trying to make their church feel more Protestant with a lot of the changes that he's made and more just like a regular Christian church, I think are a really, really good move away from the separatist movement that Brigham Young started. So talking about Brigham Young, I, I, I want to clarify a couple of things. Number one, I want to make it clear that I'm a firm believer in the header over the first chapter of the Book of Commandments where it says that Joseph Smith was called to lead the church by the vote and the voice of the saints as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. I believe that Brigham Young, and when I say Brigham Young, I should use that term loosely. I believe that the apostles were called to lead that branch of the movement, and he just happened to be the head apostle, because of the fact that there were saints that felt moved by the Spirit and bore testimony. The Spirit told them to follow the apostles. They wanted to move out. They wanted to leave the original church and start something new. And, and obviously they've done a great job. It's been a very successful movement. If five people would have raised their hands and followed the apostles out to Utah, that would have been enough for me to bear my testimony of Brigham Young. It didn't have to be the majority of the Nauvoo saints. And it definitely wasn't the majority of the saints overall. Because most of the saints outside of Utah, in fact, I'm, I'm sorry, most of the saints outside of Nauvoo, if not all of them, they abstained from voting at all. They wanted to see what happened. They waited until the dust settled. And then when the reorganized church started, it was basically a race. Whichever missionaries got to those churches first, those were usually the ones that, that got them. Unless they were very anti-polygamy. If there was a, a congregation that was anti-polygamy, then they were obviously going to wait for the reorganized church to show up. So the problem I have with Brigham Young is that he was a very demanding person. My ancestor actually left Utah. I, I believe my understanding of the situation is that he did stay in that particular sect, but he didn't like the authoritarian regime that Brigham Young was starting. And so he went back to Ohio. 
Um, and then eventually it became a family secret that we were ever a part of that particular branch of the church or Latter-day Saints at all until my family joined when I was a little child. But the things that I have an issue with, and I want to make sure that I'm clear that I don't have a testimony of, are a lot of the same theologies that their church today doesn't believe in anymore. I do believe that as the Lord has moved this particular sect forward, he's very carefully moved them away from a lot of the false doctrines and false theologies that Brigham Young taught. So I'm going to read to you a revelation that I received read from a revelation. This is uh, section 13a from Doctrines of the Saints. And it does say in verse 5, I did not call thee to cry, talking to me, I did not call thee to cry repentance to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Dash Day Saints, though all men are in need of repentance, even those in the portion of my church as formed by the hand of my servant Brigham Young. So, how can I not bear testimony that Brigham Young and his sect are a part of our movement and that they are a part of the greater Church of Christ when I have a revelation from the Lord right here that says, the portion of my church? So they are clearly a portion of, of the greater Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, or the greater Church of Jesus Christ, if you prefer. Now it does say that they, in this branch of the tree of the fruit of my gospel, have done many works of righteousness and many grievous things in my name, rejecting my works. Yet I say unto thee, judge them not, for none are perfect, no, not one. I will call whom I will call, and I will choose they whom I will choose to be leaders of men in these the last days in the many branches of Zion. So we need to celebrate the good things that they've done. And what are some of those good things? Well, they've made the Book of Mormon really, really easy to access. They literally give it away for free. You can buy a copy for you know a couple of dollars. You can go online and and and, and receive. Use you know they have a, a on the scripture they have a scripture app that you can use online they have resources available to everyone the papers that have been put out by the Joseph Smith Project are just amazing there's a lot of really good things and and I know you know for a church that has I think it's like three hundred billion dollars or whatever the little tiny bit in comparison to what they have of of works to help humanity human, humanitarian causes does seem very very small but. The fact that they do it, even if it is less than 1% of their overall net worth that they give, the fact that they do give anything at all is a blessing, and we should be thankful for the fact that they do it. So some of the things I want to talk about with Brigham Young today, because uh, I want to be clear, it says in verse 19, in the days of my servant, Brigham Young, there was much diversity, and I called the twelve to lead the larger portion of the branches of my church. And I had called Brigham Young to lead the twelve through the mouth of my servant, Joseph. And this I did through the voice of my people, as the Holy Spirit moved them to choose for themselves a leader. So, how did the Lord call Brigham Young and the twelve? Exactly what I said before, exactly what the first chapter in the Book of Commandments, the header says, through the Holy Spirit, as moved by the voice of the people. Then it says in verse 28, When a portion of my saints went to the far west to make unto themselves a new home, my servant Brigham began to teach new doctrines that were not of me. Yet he continued to do a mighty work for me in my name. So again, good and evil done by this man. My servant Brigham took from men their right to the office of the priesthood, not for their sins, but for the color of their skins. Behold, this work of darkness led to other false doctrines, and priestcraft entered this branch of my church upon the earth by, the, by these means. Yet these works of men could not frustrate the work of the Lord. And this portion, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-Dash Day Saints, continues to flourish in my name as a branch of Zion. The keys these men kept, and some did use them even as they were worthy, but they were not worthy of themselves, but because my grace was sufficient for them. And these did, did excuse me, and these men did speak in my name and preach my word unto the world. 
And then he goes on to talk about how the Lord through and the way they have it set up is basically what the way someone's released from their calling as president of their church is through death. And obviously God isn't just going to go out and just murder everybody. So it's going to be a natural process where people are going to die of natural causes. And eventually the Lord can, since, since this, this group of people doesn't believe in voting against someone, regardless of what the Holy Spirit says, they always have to vote for them. The Lord's had to work very, very slowly with them. And plus there's so many people, it's really hard to turn the ship around when it's, when it's done something wrong. Because as we've seen in, in smaller branches of, of our faith, when someone tries to do a correction via a revelation from the Lord, it's like the church, that church just splits. And we have seen this happen with the Brighamites. When Spencer W. Kimball led his fellow apostles to move in prayer for the Holy Spirit to guide them in what to do on blacks and the priesthood, and they were finally able to restore in their branch of our shared faith, these keys of the priesthood to black men, a lot of people left their church. They left for fundamentalism. They left for various other Brighamite fundamentalist sects. So we even see that happening there. But I also know that a lot of the things that their leaders want them to do that their members don't agree with, they stick around anyway. So when the Lord is finally able to get someone in, someone in charge that can make the changes that he wants, the people who've been hanging on are just like, oh, finally, okay, we're here. We knew we'd get there. We knew we'd get there. We're there. And I can tell you that's true because I've, I've met some of these people. I've met people who knew that blacks were supposed to have the priesthood and were so ecstatic when these leaders finally stopped that policy. So it, so the revelation does, if you want to read it, go in and talk about um, how the Lord did call other people in to basically repair the damage, so to speak. Uh, and it also says, in verse 49, my servant Brigham brought secret works into my church. And, and that's talking about the fact that, he, it, well, verse 51, he did hide my truth behind temple walls and add unto them his own secret doctrines. And then it goes in to explain, you know, um, my servant Brigham made a secret of that which was to be a light unto the world that all men and women might know that my works were once again to be found in the temples of the Lord. Yea, even my house of holiness. And even now there are oaths and covenants that are not of me found in my house. So they're still working and some changes. I know some changes have been made since I left this particular sect. And and it's kind of funny. I've actually been accused of leading their prophet astray because some of the changes that they made make it more like our temple rituals. So we, we do see that the Lord is still working through the leaders of that particular church. It's just, again, very slow going. Uh, one last thing I want to mention is from another revelation. And that is section 10B. And it says in verse 12, And my servant Brigham Young took from his branch of my church, again, it's still a branch of the Lord's church, the Sisterhood of Magdalene and reinstated as Relief Society and, re 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 and reinstated it as the Relief Society after the Order of Men. So in other words, he took the priesthood away from women. Why he did that, why he took it away from blacks, that could be another video if you guys really want me to talk about it. But what I want to do is, is bear my testimony on Brigham Young. Yes, he was insecure. Yes, he taught false doctrines. Yes, he led their sect in a direction that is quite toxic. And frankly, a lot of the people I talk to the spirit, suffer from spiritual PTSD. 99.9% .9 of them come from that particular sect, which makes sense because they're the largest. But most people I talk to from other branches of the faith are just the spiritually homeless. They just are looking for a home. They don't feel like they fit in anywhere else. They haven't received the same level of toxicity as the people I talk to from the Salt Lake City Church. So I want to be clear that while I do sustain Brigham Young as, a, as an apostle, as a leader of one of the branches of the faith, and I, I love all the wonderful things that they've done, I'm not calling them to repentance. At the same time, I'm also not condoning the bad things that they've done. I'm not going to condemn and I'm not going to condone. 
I'm just going to love them where they are, and I'm going to sustain their leaders as the leaders of their branch of our shared faith. I believe that Brigham Young was called to lead the people out West because, and, and I can tell you, I've seen this myself when it, the first, when I was first called to start this fellowship, these people came to me and they were so angry and I ended up having to shut it down temporarily until the Lord told me to, to bring it back up because they were, their anger was just overwhelming everything. We see the same thing with the people. They've been driven from Ohio to Missouri to Nauvoo, now out west. It led to massacres. It led to oppression. It led to horrible, horrible atrocities. And they are still healing. Think about that. These are people that are now very wealthy, that are doing very, very well for themselves. And yet they're still healing. I remember growing up and, and hearing all these stories about Hans Mill and the United States government coming out to attack them in Utah and just one negative thing after another and they just can't let go. So we really can't judge them for the evil that they're doing because it's become a part of their culture that they're still years and generations later, healing from. So my testimony to you today is that, yes, Brigham Young was called to lead the apostles by Joseph Smith. Yes, he was called by a portion of the saints to go out west and through their missionary work and their very strong determination, they have really grown their branch of our shared faith. We need to love them where they are and see the good that they're doing for the world. We don't need to mimic or copy the bad things that they've done, and we don't need to harp on them either. We need to let them have the space and the time needed to heal. And we here in the fellowship and other branches of Zion, other branches of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, we can be that home for the spiritually homeless that they are not ready to accept. We can be there to comfort those in, stand, in need of comfort that have been rejected by them, damaged by them, hurt by them, suffering from spiritual PTSD because of things that they've done. We can be those called by the Lord to clean up to, to run damage control and let them have the space they need to heal. So let's please stop attacking the Salt Lake City Church. Let's please stop condemning them for the things they're doing wrong. We can look at every church in and outside of Latter-day Saint movement and point to good and bad that everyone's done. I feel like people go after them just because they're bigger than everybody else. And that makes it a little bit easier and honestly, I think a lot of people are jealous of their success. They're jealous. Of, it's like, how can they be so mean and cruel and yet grow so big? Because we live in a mean and cruel world. And the reality is that these people need Jesus Christ just as much as everywhere else, as everyone else. And they need a place to go. They need a place where they can find Christ in their lives. And I bear you my testimony that Brigham Young was called to create that place. And over time, we know that they're going to repent of the things that they've done wrong because we see that they've repented as they have thus far. They don't teach blood atonement anymore. They don't teach Adam God doctrine anymore. In fact, they're very much against both of those things. In fact, most of the things that I don't like, that the theologies and doctrines, a lot of them that, that I really don't like, they've, they've gotten rid of. Can they do more to make blacks a part of their church? And I say blacks and not black Americans or African Americans because it's people with, with dark skin. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
they can be much more diverse when they're ready. So let's give them the space. Let's give them the time. There are plenty of other branches out there for those that need something offered to them beyond what this particular branch of our shared faith is capable of. So that's my testimony today, and that's my Thursday thought. And I leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.